what are some of the biggest mistakes new YouTubers are making? And I believe nobody's talking about these mistakes. And I know you're going to get some value, especially if you're a new creator on YouTube or you're just planning on starting out. But if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Omar Takori from Think Media, and I'm excited to be helping you with your new YouTube channel journey. If you're joining us on the live, put in the comments where you are watching from. And if you're watching on the replay, go ahead and put replay fam down in the comments. Uh, we'd love to see where you are watching from, but let's jump right into mistake number one. Mistake number one, and I, I don't see anybody talking about this, but is launching with just one video. Have you done this? Like uploaded one video to your YouTube channel and then told your whole world that you are launching your YouTube channel? This is not a good way to start because it actually doesn't give a viewer a proper journey. You know, so if some, everybody, everybody goes on your YouTube channel, watches one video, and then it's like, and then what? And so what is the, what is the fix for this mistake? And this is something we've been telling our community uh, recently. It's to start your YouTube channel with five videos. Like before you actually launch your YouTube channel, launch it or upload five videos with titled, thumbnailed, edited, ready to go, and then launch your YouTube channel. I think uh, this is uh, awesome because it actually gives people a journey to get started. And so, you know, thinking through that, now there's not that much pressure for you to start with just like the one video, go back, plan, get five video ideas. And let me, can I give you one video idea? One video idea can be your channel trailer. So now you only really have to come up with four. So make a video about what your channel is about and then make four videos on, uh, on helping other people. I like to, when we create videos on Think Media, and if you don't know what Think Media is, it is our a channel where we teach the best tips and tools on how to grow your influence with online video and YouTube. And we teach editing tutorials, how to make videos with your smartphone, YouTube strategy tips and things like that. But if you can, if you can think in series, you'll create, you'll, you'll have bigger video idea lists. And so that's one way to think and approach a video idea rather than thinking about one good video, what about a series that can surround that topic? This will help you create multiple videos at one time. And I know it's going to help your channel. But if that tip alone was very helpful, go ahead and hit like if you're watching. Uh, dang, we got Dave Gorman from Ireland. Uh, we got Upstate New York official and Lynn Show. We have uh, Streamwood, Illinois in the house. Sup, homies? Yo, what up, Square Table, homie? Uh, and we got Denmark. Dude, we are broadcasting like the power of live streaming and shout out to StreamYard for allowing us to do this takeover. We're talking about the biggest mistakes newer creators make and we would love to answer I'd love to answer some of your questions on YouTube specifically. And so if you'd like to put that in the comments uh, below, would love to get to those if possible. And then we're going to have some fun a little bit later, maybe do a little bit of overrated underrated YouTube edition. Um, but mistake number 2 I see a lot of creators make is starting with selfish motives. Starting with selfish motives. I want to build a YouTube channel that's going to grow my influence, that's going to make me money, that's going to... A lot of times I see a lot of creators start this way and it actually makes it really hard to play the long game if you start with selfish motives. It's because in essence, the way YouTube rewards creators is it rewards creators who don't uh, have selfish motives but want to serve. So your goal isn't to create your influence per se. Your goal should just be to help people. Find what is something that you know that you know could help people. And in some cases, it could be as practical as helping people with gardening. It can help people with real estate, but also you can help people with entertainment. You know, I, I wanna help people laugh and, you know, and have some joy in the middle of the week. That could be a form of service. I think that is one uh, way of approaching your content creation journey is, is you're just trying to serve people. And I promise there's always a reward. Uh, I think John Maxwell says it says it like this. He's a, he's a leadership coach. He would say you could never lose by helping other people win. And we like to say a lot of times on think media is that the creator that understands the viewer most wins. And so have the viewer in the front of your mind, when you're creating content, when you're planning content, when you're thinking about making that thumbnail that you want them to click on, if you have that person in mind, you will connect with them better. And I promise you will also find them better because you have them, uh, you know, it's like I'm, I'm creating content for this person. I would actually encourage you, take a moment this week, get a notebook. 
I got a notebook back there. I was trying to grab it. It's too far. <laughs> Get a notebook and write down the person you're trying to reach. Give that person a name. Get, uh, write down that there maybe their age range, maybe like five to seven year age range in regards to where they're uh, at in life. And then, and then write where, what they're trying to do and their, their current struggles. When we create videos at Think Media, the person I, I like to think about is Heather Torres. She's actually one of the creators on Think Media, but she isn't like a camera person. She doesn't know how to work all the tech and the gear. But when I'm creating tech gear reviews and camera reviews, I'm thinking about Heather because she's a you know, stay at home mom who homeschools her kids, who needs it simple. And that helps me create more content. And I promise your ideas will start going through the roof as soon as you start serving and not selling. Mistake number three, I see a lot of creators make this. We're talking about big mistakes creators are making when they first start out. But mistake number three is not collecting emails. Wait, Omar, what are we talking about here? I'm like, I'm trying to build a YouTube channel. I want to grow my subscriber base, bro. You, you, you need to collect emails. And this is essentially for someone who wants to take YouTube a little more serious. I mean, if you're serious about YouTube and you want to take YouTube serious, then, then this, this would be your, the mistake you might be making. If you don't care and you, want, you just want an outlet for your creativity, heck, by all means, make your lifestyle vlog videos. Go ahead. That's cool. You know, make your uh, you know, travel vlogs. And that's awesome. But, but you not collecting emails or even just data from your subscribers is, is actually going to rob you from being able to serve people at a deeper level. A lot of people just want to go deeper with the person that's actually helping them. So if you have a, a helpful YouTube channel, People are going to want to go deep with you, like if you have it to offer. And here's here's one way that you can actually collect emails very easily. Create a free downloadable PDF. You can use, uh, you know, something like Canva. Another cool uh, web based software is, is called Adobe Express. And these are graphic designing softwares that are web based. So you don't need to download anything. And you can create a downloadable PDF that you give away for free. And then you just put that link in your description. And I and over time, you will build out an email list and a community. And a lot of people going kind of kind of, uh, you know, touching on the last mistake. But like one way to not have a selfish motive is, is actually to create a community of people you want to serve. And you can you can serve people at deeper levels. And YouTube just is the top level of the way you serve somebody, you know, but some people just want you know, I, I want to be helped one on one. Maybe maybe you offer coaching if you're a coach, a consultant or something like that. Uh, maybe you have a, a mini course that you can, you know, tell somebody about later on once you grab their email. And once you've given already something for free, this is something we've done early on in Think Media when we were making these camera review tutorials. We had a buyer's guide, like what to look out for for a camera on YouTube. We had a free downloadable PDF and we grew an email list to hundreds of thousands of emails and so although the YouTube channel is growing, now we have data on people we are serving and then you can help them at a deeper level. Uh, and so that, that, that's a, a huge uh, mistake. Uh, Square Table, it says, I get people's social media info too and holler at them over there. Very smart. You know, one way of getting people's data is actually sending people to like your Instagram and then they follow you there and then you can go in the DMs and help people, um, you know, and, you know, look at pro athletes. You never hear them demean or badmouth others they actually get fined if they do isn't that crazy a lot of it there is so much about youtube if you think of it like a professional sport you know like i didn't even have this in my notes but one way you can actually view your videos is like game tape if you're making videos watch your videos back and improve them later on that's what the pros do if the pros are watching their games back i think as youtubers trying to create a career or a business or what have you on YouTube, you should watch them back and see how you can make it better. If we're all always trying to get better we, and we encourage people just work on one thing, get 1% better with every upload. Mistake number four, mistake number four is not having a clear value proposition. Not having a clear value proposition. You, you should be able to articulate why someone should subscribe to your YouTube channel. If you can't articulate that, then you have a you have a confused channel. And it's going to and then if you're confused about how you're trying to help people, then can you imagine the amount of people that are going to be confused at your content? It's like, "Whoa, why did they just, you know, th th that those two uploads didn't make sense whatsoever." You know, so what is the why? You know, Think Media is helping people build their influence by giving the best tips and tools on how to do it. So what is tips and tools? That's strategy. 
You know, what is tips and tools? That's how to use your smartphone, best microphone for smartphones, best cheap light kit. Like we, we, we're, that's the, the value proposition. And I, and we, you know, I would really encourage you to, to find this reason. Like what is even the reason for your YouTube channel? We found that reasons come before results. If you don't have deep enough reasons, you're going to have a hard time seeing the results and it's going to be very tough to like reach more people. It's going to be tough to, to keep going, but having strong, a strong why uh, is going to be, is going to allow you to actually progress and, and create videos uh, long-term because this is a, this is a long game. This is not a sprint. YouTube is a thing that you need to see through. And so I would encourage you to develop your why. I would love to know in your, literally in the comments, let me know in the comments below, what is your value proposition for your YouTube channel or why should I subscribe to your YouTube channel? So if you were at a restaurant and I asked you what you did and you were like, oh, I'm a YouTuber, what's your YouTube channel about? Let me know down in the comments. We'd love to like legit know. Um, Toby says, I have a motorcycle channel and my description says, here to help other bikers with vlogging, installs, writing, et cetera. That's awesome. Super sweet. I, I would actually, if you can remove that list, Toby, what, what would the, the one word be after with? I mean, like if you, if you can consolidate, you might even say I help new bikers um, and, and that'll help, you know, row and Annette edit starts encourage and up, uplift people. Awesome. I would say that's a little on the general side. So like I would say with what? So I love how Toby had the with part. Um, and then so encourage and up, uplift people with weekly videos on book reviews with uh, daily inspirational quotes, you know, you know, what, what is that thing? And, um, and so, yeah, yeah, my channel is the next Joe Rogan best way to describe it concisely. That's cool. But Joe Rogan has built his ability to be very general over time. So, um, so if, if when I, when I read that, I'm like, okay, are you going to have three hour conversations? I mean, maybe, but I would say have a, a, a more dialed in, and, and that's why a lot of the time, the more, the more like dialed in you can get, the more um, clear people will understand what your channel is about. If you're getting value, hit that like button. So glad to be sharing these. Um, uh, I think mistake number five is huge, but before, be sure to comment your questions down below as we'll be, uh, I'll be answering some of those uh, questions, but mistake number five. Oh yeah. Let me, let me hit you with the, with the stream yard real quick. We're, we are live streaming on StreamYard, as you are, as you know. This is powered by StreamYard, and this is a Think Media takeover. But you can get a free 14-day free trial of StreamYard uh, by clicking the link in the description below. And uh, here's what I, you know, one feature that not a lot of people talk about with StreamYard is that it's also a recorder. I, there's a lot of people I help, you know, even on like a consultation basis where they don't want to take out an SD card from a camera. They just want to like, you know, capture a teaching or a, 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 de a demonstration of something. And a lot of times I'm like, yo, if you want to do that, you can actually get StreamYard, record your video on StreamYard, and then you have it, you can download it, then make any final tweets and stuff like that, unless, or you can just conduct a presentation and then download it this way. So check out the 14 day free trial if you have not already. Mistake number five is not outs outsourcing your work so sooner. One of the biggest mistakes new YouTubers make is that they don't outsource their work sooner. And I think this is uh, easy because we don't typically go into YouTube thinking of it like a business. And the, the reality is, if you want this thing to fund your life or fund your creativity or, or to create income from it, you need to start thinking like an entrepreneur. You need to start thinking like a business owner and that your, your business has a YouTube channel. And so if, if I start thinking my, as my uh, YouTube channel like this, then I need to reinvest into my YouTube channel. And I, I say this is a big mistake for a lot of new creators because you can get videos edited for a fairly cheap cost. You can get thumbnails made for a fairly cheap cost. Like Yeezys with tax are like $260. I see you walking around with those foam slides, the resale value at $320 for some foam slides. You can, you can get like three videos edited with that $260, $300. And I think that like, imagine what that will do with your creative process, knowing that the weight of editing and the weight of thumbnails doesn't have to rely on you anymore. I don't believe every creator should know, be, should be a pro editor, but
but I think you should should think about outsourcing your your, your editing and your thumbnails and and think about doing that sooner. I found people who do that sooner than they think grow. They 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 just they hit a, a tipping point with their YouTube channel and they just grow a ton because now your creativity is going all into the content and not necessarily the post post production. And so I, I I would encourage you to 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 do that and 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 start outsourcing your work a little bit sooner and and dedicate some funds to do that. It's it's going to cost you. It's going to feel like it's costing you up front, but there is nothing like buying back your time. And the beautiful thing about uploading videos is your videos go to work when you go to work. So if you're splitting a full-time income right now and, or a full-time job and you want to create a YouTube channel that has views and stuff, dude, you can get views while you snooze and you can get views while you work. I was trying to find a word that, um, that I was trying to rhyme. But mistake number six, and then we're going to get in some, comment, uh, some questions. Mistake number six, and I see this a lot, is not staying a student. Being a student of YouTube will change the way you create content. I always like to say, if you can consolidate what it is you're consuming, it'll help with your creativity. So no longer should you be someone who binges content on random content, you know, like just sit down on the couch, put on a Mr. Beast, and then just veg out. No, you're a YouTuber, friend. I want you to start watching and, 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 and determining how people are reaching you. Why did you click on that thumbnail? Why did you stay throughout that entire video? I'm kind of ruined as, I've, as somebody who's been making videos for over 15 years, uh, just starting from high school. I, I can't watch a movie without like, you know, investigating and dissecting a, a specific shot. Like, oh my gosh, that's a beautiful shot. And here's why it's beautiful. There's symmetry in it. Like I, I can break it down, but I want to encourage you to do that with your consuming of content. Ask yourself, why? Why did, why did this hit me? Why did, why did this make my finger want to tap on that image, you know, and, and, and knowing, uh, you know, how you watch a YouTube video is actually more important than what you're actually watching. Take a moment and, and, and study why people are showing up on your feed. And, and I literally like, if I can just be honest with you, can I, can I be honest here? Is that okay? Can I be honest? All right, cool. I literally saw a video show up on my feed and it was a fashion video. You know, it was like three trends that died in 2022. Something about it in me was like, okay, I don't want to wear anything that's out of trend, bro. So I'm going to click on this video. And as I, as, I, as I clicked on that video, I was like, dude, what a good title that was. And so you guess what? I guess you, can you guys guess what I did? I took that video it's title and I just made a, vi a YouTube version of it. Three YouTube trends that died in 2022. That video is absolutely crushing. And all I did was I, I determined why I clicked on a video and then made my version of that. And, and we'll pull it up right here. Three trends that died in 2022. Uh, you know, and now, you know, it ranks for YouTube trends, bro. I didn't even, what are we even talking about? But this comes from me being a student, being, be a student of the game of YouTube. And I promise you'll succeed. And the reason why is because you need to evolve as a creator. You know, things are changing. Like YouTube's, YouTube's always changing. The algorithm, the algorithm's changing, which one cool thing about the algorithm changing is that they're actually trying to push smaller YouTube channels now on the recommended feed. No longer are just the big guys getting hit or the big girls being shown, but they're actually showing small YouTube channels. So if you can convince somebody to click on your video and watch throughout it, you're going to crush. One more mistake that I want to share before we get into some uh, questions, but the mistake is just quitting too soon. Just giving up before you should. Uh, I think you should see this thing through. There's a, there's a, there is room for you on YouTube. And can I tell you something else? That YouTube needs you. There's nobody else that can make the videos you're supposed to create because you're supposed to create them. So don't, don't quit, quit on yourself too soon. Omar, I, I uploaded 10 videos on my channel. I'm still not seeing traction. Keep going. If, if we, we oftentimes overestimate what we can do in a day and we underestimate what we can do in five years, could you imagine over the course of five years, just being a consistent creator, creating a, a library of content, uploading a, a, a weekly video, 52 times five, I'm not good at math, but that's a lot of, that's like a lot of videos. And, and those videos are just getting views and you got links in the description, giving away a free downloadable PDF that leads to a, a course that may cut sell, you know, that you can make. Can you imagine like that's possible for you? 
But if you quit too soon, you won't see it through. So, so just commit, just commit to the, the long game, commit to you serving an audience and helping them with whatever it is you, you know that you're supposed to help them with. You know what you're supposed to do. I don't know, but you know what you're supposed to help them with. And I want you to start thinking of yourself different. Think of it like you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And can, can I tell you something crazy? Never in the history of marketing can you get paid for advertising your business. Did you hear what I just said? That never. If, if you're using YouTube and social media to market your business and you do it right, these platforms will pay you. What are we even talking about? Like, I get paid to promote my business? That changes the game. And I would encourage you to stick it out. I, I find if I can boil down Think Media in like 2022 and, and kind of like the value proposition, even though I said it's helping people with you know tips and tools to create online videos, I would say it like this. We're trying to help business owners and entrepreneurs see themselves as content creators, but we're also trying to help content creators see themselves as business owners and entrepreneurs. And, and, and knowing where you are is so key. Having the self-awareness to know like, yo, I'm a content creator and I never thought of it this way as a business. Hey, I'm a business owner. I own, I own a company. I never thought of this. You know, I never thought I would get in front of a camera and make videos. Like, which one are you? We'd actually love to know in the comments below which one you are. But those are the seven mistakes that I see newer YouTubers make that I think if you can, if you can solve those mistakes with, with some of the solutions I shared in this, then you're going to crush it this year on YouTube. I would love to get into some, com uh, some questions that we have. And as, as you put on those, uh, put some YouTube questions in the comments, we're going to do some underrated, overrated YouTube edition. And this is hot fire hot fire round. And uh, I got Nolan in the back kind of helping me go through these, but let's, uh, let's go over underrated, overrated uh, YouTube edition and, and legit put your comments in the question, but let's go with the first one. Let's go with the first one. Underrated or overrated. Go. So for the first one, what's up Omar? For the very first one, we have react channels. I want to know, Omar, do you think they're underrated or overrated? First off, if you don't know what a react channel is, it's um, a lot easier. I don't want to say easier, but uh, based on some of the other videos that are out there right now, react channels are when you actually watch a piece of content, you give your two cents on them. And a lot of people think you can't monetize them, but if it's a true uh, react video, then it's uh, transformative, it's fair use. And um, we, we saw Mr. Beast get into the react channel uh, arena. And, and we've seen a lot of people utilize this form of content and I guess my question is for everybody watching this who has a YouTube channel, should they be doing React videos, not just React channel, but should they be doing React videos on their YouTube channels in their niche? Let me know. What do you think? Is it overrated or is it underrated? I, bet, I, I would say React channels or React content is totally underrated. And here's why. Because you don't actually have to come up with the content. Like this is like one of the smartest ways to actually be a content creator and a, a, a very smart content format is to react to something that makes sense in your industry, niche, or business. So if there's something that went on in the world, uh, can you react to it? If there's, if there's a new product that released, can you talk about your, your, your thoughts on that product? And you didn't have to develop the product. All you had to do was talk about it. Isn't that really cool? Like, like it's, it's so funny. You can make content on content that was made from content that you make the content, <laughs> you know, like I, I genuinely love watching reactionary videos for people that are experts in their field it's particularly, and this is kind of like a weird guilty pre pleasure, but I love like a vo vocal coach. It. I love vocal coaches that react to songs because they break down why the song you, why you love the song. You, they break down the nuances of a person's voice. Like one, one was like Justin Bieber's Peaches, the, uh, Tristan. He was like, here's why you love this song. It's because it's like you get three songs in one. I was like, oh, dang, that's actually pretty true because of the dynamic of change in voice. And he's just reacting to the song. He didn't make the song, but his you know, reaction got like a ton of views. So I would, enc I would encourage you with that. Like see how you can implement some reactionary content in your channel and it could be, it think you can think of it like consultation. You know, if like, if you're reviewing somebody's something, let's just say, you know, you know, here on uh, 
StreamYard or even a, a service we like is vidIQ. It's doing like channel audits. You're just reacting to other people's channel and saying like, hey, you can upload a better thumbnail. Hey, you can change your channel banner. This is just reacting. You're not having to create the content. So very underrated because it's an easy way to create content. Yeah, I, um, I think we had a, a good question in here too, which is uh, j just to clarify too, because Square Table said you are talking more about a review channel. I feel, you know, the typical reaction channels are is someone sitting there going, ha 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 to a video. So um, I think that's where I think what Omar's saying is like, open yourself up to the type of content you can make because you don't, let's just say, what was one of the, the motorcycle, okay? Let's say a brand new motorcycle comes out you could react to that if your community would be interested and um, people like hearing other people's thoughts. That's like why gossip happens. That's why friends talk <laughs> about movies after the movie comes out. And so uh, I think people do underestimate. Uh, I think it is underrated because people want to know what does Omar think about TikTok? And that's kind of what we're doing here with underrated, overrated. So um, open up your mind to what reaction can be. Obviously, uh, if, it, if it comes to news and that kind of stuff, this is stuff we do on Think Media. It starts to be not as reactionary, but you can very simply sit down, watch a video, check out a new product, look at the the the, the new thing that's coming out, and react to it, and give your you know first impressions on that. I think that's very strong, and so that's a great one. But we do have some more underrated, overrated. As I pull up the next one, we have the subscriber number. Omar. And so basically, you know, if you have, so ba basically YouTube took away the right to hide your subscriber count. You used to be able to click a button in the back end and no one could see how many subscribers you had. And now they've done some changes and uh, to help kind of with these fake YouTube channels, you can see everyone's subscribers when you click on their YouTube channel. Um, if someone has a hundred subscribers, if someone has like think media over 2 million subscribers, uh, what does that mean? You know, is it, is having a high subscriber number, is that overrated or underrated? What are your thoughts on that? Do subscriber numbers matter or is it underrated or overrated? Can I tell you from somebody who has a channel that we upload to that has over 2 million subscribers? I believe it's overrated because a lot of people make that the goal getting all the subscribers you get. And I get it. It's the reward system of YouTube. Like you get a plaque when you pass 100,000 subs. You get a gold plaque when you get a million subscribers. But it's it becomes irrelevant when, when that is your goal. Like not all subscribers are going to turn into potential customers. Not all subscribers are even engaged. It's kind of It's kind of like a, it's more ethereal than it is anything because you actually... If you are getting more views on your videos than your subscriber count, you're actually in such a great place because YouTube is recommending your videos. And if people aren't subscribing, and this is why it's overrated, is because if people aren't subscribing to your channel, YouTube's still serving them your next video if it makes sense for them based off of the content they're trying to watch. You know, one recent you know example of this was Ryan Trahan. Ryan Trahan, if you don't know, did this uh, you know month long vlog series. And so much people weren't subscribing to his videos because it was showing up on their feed. You would watch it. And then the next day you'd be served his next video immediately. And that, that, that's a beautiful thing. And so I, I would say all that to say that subscriber numbers are overrated. It cool. It is a place of authority, bro. Do, do I get, do I sound pretty cool when I'm like, yeah, we got a YouTube channel with 2 million subs for sure. But like, if you watched our video that we drop on Monday, because I made a video that will rank in search. I made a, a very specific Premiere to uh, Adobe Premiere tutorial. It got no views on its first day. I think it was like 4,000 views, but I'm hoping that over time it's going to get views because people are going to discover it in search. So not making subscribers be your first goal is going to be very healthy for your YouTube journey. And I would say just focus on serving people and the content will find the people you're trying to serve. YouTube will do that for you. Why don't you feed the beast of YouTube? and uh, get them to uh, recommend your videos. Awesome. That is, uh, that's a great answer. And it's a perfect tie in to our next underrated or overrated. Um, but first, if you guys have questions, uh, could be, you know, related to what you're going through your niche, make sure you drop them down in the comments. We're going to be hanging on to those and answering those next. We aren't doing any sort of channel reviews or anything like that. But if you have a question that uh, Omar can answer regarding tech, 
cameras, lighting, audio, and also just like YouTube or social media strategy. I know Omar is going to be uh, excited to answer those questions. But going into our next overrated, underrated, it's a, it's a nice tie-in because a lot of people, what I'm seeing is they're saying it doesn't matter as much about the subscriber count. They just want to get monetized. And so they're saying, I just want views because I'll hit a thousand subscribers eventually, but they need the watch hours. They want their, their videos to get views. And uh, this next one is video ranking. So when you post the video, you just talked about this. Um, and as you're talking, Omar, I'm going to do a little screen share to kind of show what you're talking about. But this video, we dropped it and it was a, um, a 10 out of 10, which sounds good. If you I know it's like every time I explain it to people, they're like, oh, that's that's awesome. I'm like, no, basically they're ranking it from how it's performing uh, with other videos. And I'll share an example. But one out of 10 would be this is the best performing video out of your last 10 videos. Yesterday, I believe it was yesterday or two days ago, Omar uh, dropped a tutorial that was a 10 out of 10. Can you talk about maybe why our audience didn't click on that video? And can you also talk about, and I'll share more examples on why you think this video is going to still crush a year, two years down the line. Right. It's very interesting. And I think it's something a lot of people, um, they just don't even, you know, think about. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, let me just encourage you with the first thought that you should know what your, what your video is serving or what purpose your video is serving. And not always are we trying to get you to click every day. I mean, we do the best we can if it makes sense. But let me just break this down. I made a, an Adobe Premiere tutorial video on how to use the trim tool, like how to cut and slice video, which is a very basic thing for beginners. But the reason why I made that video, number one, I felt like it was what I consider low hanging fruit. It's a very easy video for someone like me to make. Uh, however, with so many subscribers and so many people that have, um, you know, content coming out on their channel or subscribe to Think Media, not all of them are Adobe Premiere Pro editors. That's just the facts. That's like most people, there's there's six other uh, editing softwares. So making a specific one, but as you can see on the screen, uh, I actually lost two subscribers, everybody. There you go, clap it up, clap it up. Um, but this video is performing terrible now. However, the hope is that a video like this will rank in search. And over the course of years, I made a video called like how to sync your audio with Adobe Premiere Pro. And that video has like over 200,000 views. When that video dropped, it got no views, but I knew what the video was serving. And so uh, when doing some research and you find a video that isn't doing too well, like, and you could look, look at when the video actually took off. It took off over a year later, <laughs> like legit, dude, like look at that. So what you could see is like the, this is the YouTube studio back end. And this is in 2020 when Omar looked like he was from the Middle East, in all honesty. And I'm half Middle Eastern, by the way. But like, look at that beard. My gosh. Anyway, he's going to get taken down. They're going to take him. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but look, look at when this video actually took off. Crazy. This is a four minute tutorial of me being like, select this clip, hit sync. And now it grew us by over 3000 subscribers, made $2,600 like YouTube search being the top uh, source, but you, you know, it's awesome. And that's, that's a good thing too. Like as far as people sticking around a little bit, but I say all that to say, this is why I think, you know, knowing what your video's purpose is, is very important. There are times where we're like, dude, this is going to be a one out of 10. This is going to be a slapper. This is going to go viral. And, and, and sometimes that doesn't always happen, but, but we, we know at least that's what we're trying to do with, with a video like that. And, and sometimes you can be discouraged just because a video isn't, uh, you know, performing as good as you thought it would, but it's okay. Just keep uploading. If you know it's a helpful video, then be okay. I look at the comments of that Adobe video, bro. People are like, dog, you saved me five hours in editing, bro. This is mind blowing. So like for the people that it did serve, that's how helpful it's, it is. And so be, it's okay. And, and let me also encourage you with this. You actually get rewarded by uploading videos to YouTube with information with statistics and analytics. If you're not uploading consistently, you actually don't get access to information. And so I always like to encourage people like the, the more consistent you are at uploading videos, the more data and feedback YouTube is actually giving you because YouTube wants you to succeed. Imagine if everybody was coming out on coming on on YouTube and they're like, let's let's just make it as hard as possible for these people to grow. That, that's not what their goal is. Their goal is to actually get you in front of the right people. So help YouTube help you. That's one of the, the easiest things you can start doing. 
Yeah. And, you know, one thing to add too, um, I completely agree with you. I think, you know, the ranking system, it, it is nice to know how your audience, uh, you know, likes this video initially when you post it uh, compared to your other videos. I think that's super helpful. I'm glad they have it there. But with a channel like ours, where we post different topics, it's not as useful. So if you do have that motorcycle channel or you have that, that channel that's about knitting and it's, it's the same thing every time it, it's, it's more valuable, I think, but for us, and I think for a lot of people, it's like play the long game, you know, here, this video was one out of 10. You can see it, it did really well with our audience. It's a bit of a shorter video than usual. And so it hasn't been getting as many impressions and it hasn't, you know, it's kind of fallen into just our average. It started above average and has mm. fallen to the average. Great this is example. a one out of 10. Um, then again, we do have another video, which is the vlogging video that we did, which is vlogging is dead. This video was a one out of 10 as well, and it kept going. And now this video has generated over a thousand dollars within the first month. It's almost a thousand subscribers. I mean, this one video like would monetize, would monetize a brand new channel. And so it depends on the channel. I think don't put all your baskets into, uh, don't put all, don't put all your eggs into the basket of freaking out. If it's a 10 out of 10 and it's not performing well, give it time. Um, one of my favorite examples is Tony who, uh, who used to work with think media and now he's like directing some really awesome stuff with the XFL and, and all that kind of stuff. But he, uh, had a channel where he was talking about movies and I think it was like, over, it was a Lord of the Rings video and it literally, I think it had like, like less than a thousand views over the course of a year. It, it didn't have a lot of views. And then after a year, it literally just skyrocketed and it got hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of views on that video. So I just think patience is, is a big thing for a lot of YouTubers. Don't get discouraged with all these numbers. If you know what you're doing and if you're listening to people like think media and, and there's a lot of great, just YouTube education out there if you're like if, you, if you're doing it right give it time youtube's gonna find the right audience and so uh yeah, yeah. And you're the perfect example Sa right. sasha's day yeah omar you've saved me so much time setting up my canon m50 i made canon m50 videos in 2019 yeah. and if somebody's buying a canon m50 today they're going on youtube and they're like how do i set this up for youtube videos and then best believe they're finding think media and so it's okay when i dropped those videos those weren't one out of ten because not everybody has uh, M50s, right? But just know that um, your YouTube will will get to, will get it there if it's the right video for a viewer. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. So we're gonna get into the next one again, guys. Keep dropping those YouTube questions if you have them for Omar, and we're gonna get through those next. But we we are in the overrated, underrated. Omar, real quick, give them give uh, give Streamyard a little shout out. A lot of people are watching this. They might be from the Think Media community. Can you just tell them to go to streamyard.com forward slash think to get those yeah. 14 days free? To yeah, so, dude, you, I love this. you guys like honestly, StreamYard is such a great resource to get started live streaming or doing presentations, you know, and by I mean, what I mean by presentations is if, if you create content where you are using a screen to show, you actually don't need to edit, you know, and somebody actually asked, I mean, I think uh, I won't pull it up so I can leave this link up here, but somebody asked, what is, um, you know, a great editing software? You know, sometimes you don't need an editing software. Sometimes you you need something that can polish your video while you conduct it. And if you can get into the flow of delivering, you know, information, uh, sharing slides, maybe sharing reactionary content, then StreamYard would be a great resource for that. I actually made a video on Think Media called How to Make a Reaction Video um, with No Editing. And it's, it's because you can use StreamYard. You can upload all your assets to StreamYard and then play them or share them on the screen and react to it. And literally it'll, uh, you know, it's done. Like once you do it, it's done. And so there's so many uses for StreamYard more than just live streaming, but yes, it's an awesome uh, ability. If you're looking to get into video podcasting and you wanna do interviews, StreamYard makes it so easy to bring on guests just like Nolan brought on himself and we can conduct an interview, do cool transitions like that. Maybe I start talking, then I'm going to show up. Maybe Nolan's going to come back on and I can do that. And it's very easy with a click of a button and you can create shortcuts. So if that didn't convince you enough, I don't know what will, but check out StreamYard and there's no, uh, there's no, you know, 14 day free trial. Get it, play around with it. Heck, make one of your five videos that I told you to make earlier in the stream with StreamYard and see how easy. Maybe you don't even have to edit your video. 
Yeah, definitely. I love it. And so as people are dropping their questions, um, we're going to be uh, getting to those next. Let's get to the last overrated or underrated, which is shooting and uploading 4K video onto YouTube. What do you think, Omar? Is it overrated or underrated? I would say as the guy who's the camera guy, who's the video guy who only wants to show up looking this good, that shooting in 4K and uploading in 4K is totally overrated. I know it's possible. I know phones have it, which is awesome. And if you can use 4K, use it. But if it's slumping you down or it's making hard, making it hard to edit because the files are too large, don't even worry. Don't sweat it. Most people are consuming your content on YouTube in 1080, actually, if you didn't know that. And you want to know something else that's crazy? I think I learned this recently is that Mr. Beast Loki, I think on purpose makes his videos 1080 because there's a his his uh, his thought process is it it's a little bit more um, personable. It's like imperfect. It, it's a little blur. You know, it's not as crispy because sometimes when when you show up like this, like just everything just looks so good. Sometimes it actually could create a separation of someone because it's like, oh, man, they're not like me. Like, there's no way I can get there. And so. Uh, the way we use 4K is simply a means of like, you can eventually get here and we want to help you get here. And, and we make videos with, with smartphones and how you can use smartphones to make YouTube videos. But the idea that you need 4K is completely overrated. And most people are even watching our 4K content on YouTube in 1080. So don't worry about that too much uh, as it is an overrated thought. And I think it, it'd be worth just because one of the questions that came in was actually uh, someone asked in regards to editing. And so uh, let me pull up that question real quick. Yeah, I'll pull up that question. Uh, and right that's here. what we're gonna be getting into next, which is, yeah. uh, so drop, as Omar answers this, continue to drop your question guys and, and we'll get into that. But yeah. yeah, so I I think just starting out, what editing software to use? I think first, the, the first question you wanna ask yourself is what device are you going to be editing your videos with? You know, I've learned people that have laptops, you know, don't want to use their laptop to edit. They legit just want to use their smartphone. And so if that's the case, the two smartphone apps I would recommend, here's this. If you have an iPhone, the app I would recommend you use is LumaFusion. LumaFusion. It's a one-time buy of about $20 or $25. And it literally is, I think it's very easy to use, but it also has a great growth potential, which is something I like looking at forward to in editing software is like, can somebody grow with this? And is it easy to use for a beginner? L uh, LumaFusion would be one of those if you have an iPhone. If you have an Android, the one I see a lot of people use or recommend is, is KineMaster or KineMaster, uh, K-I-N-E Master. And uh, it's very similar to LumaFusion, but also very easy to use editing software that allows you to grow with it. Now, if you're editing on a laptop or a computer, um, I would say the the best free software hands down is um is uh why am i i'm drawing a blank black magic's um da vinci resolve yeah da vinci resolve it's it, like okay. the fact that it's free and what you can accomplish with the free version is actually unreal and i think over time it's going to be the number one recommended editing software just because of that price i mean there is no yeah. price point and the amount of features it has you can upgrade to about 300 dollars and buy it and then there you get all the features which is still a steal but um but i think it's just you know finding which one kind of works for you and um and, and I, so I will say with davinci resolve though it is um it's incredible and it's crazy you know that it's that, that, that it's free and how much you have there the kind of one caveat is that it is, uh, you know, you got to learn how to use it. Uh, it's a professional program. And so the free version is just like the paid version, just with a couple limitations. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're on your phone and you want to like upgrade um, and, and you're starting from scratch and you really want to be an editor, I, I definitely recommend uh, jumping in. There's so many free tutorials that uh, right. any program is going to take some time to learn. And I think, uh, because it's free and so powerful, it's worth learning. Uh, but someone also said, you know, uh, as we were talking about, uh, KineMaster, you know, they're debating moving from that to Premiere Pro. Um, they use KineMaster to keep the cost down, but they just announced, which I didn't know this, that next month their, their rates are going to five times their current cost. So that's really interesting. Um, which would be maybe a good reason to switch over to something else. Again, it always just comes down to, uh, how much time you want to learn, but we do have a, I do have a question for you that is kind of more business related, Omar, that I wanted to get your opinion on. And then, uh, and we'll continue to answer some of these YouTube questions as well. But someone asked, when should you consider registering a business? 
uh, LLC corp, S corp, you know, nonprofit, uh, or even just like, I, I would throw in there like a sole proprietor. I know yeah. that I got started with, with, um, even with YouTube stuff when I was making, uh, money on Amazon affiliates and YouTube ad revenue. I was just like a sole proprietor, but, um, I don't know. Do you have, I know this is kind of like a, an accounting or tax question. No, I've learned a lot over the years. Yeah, and let me start off by saying I am not a financial advisor, <laughs> nor am I a professional. So seek a professional wisdom when it comes to this, but my, based on my experience, when should you consider registering for a business license per se, uh, when, when it comes to your YouTube channel? Number one I, is if you own a business, your YouTube channel could be a part of the marketing of your business. So, you know, obviously all those write-offs, all those, t the time, energy, and you, you spending on editing and all that stuff for outsourcing, that can fall under the business. Now, if you are starting a YouTube channel and it's the start of your business, I would say at first, just do personal. You don't need to go crazy with that. It's when you start seeing the money like legit roll in, right? So uh, my my CPA, Matt Bontrager from TrueBooks is uh, an incredible person who actually is geared toward helping real estate professionals and content creators because the world of content creation is a new way of doing taxes because there's so many things that you can now justify because if you have a travel channel, bro, you can write off your trip. But I, I, I think he he tells me that, that that like financial income mark to create an LLC is about fifty thousand dollars. If you're making right around that, you should start a business license or get a business license, open up a business bank account, and then run all your income and also your outsource, you know, work out of that, you know, bank account. So that's kind of just the thought, you know. If if you start seeing that those numbers start rolling in, um, at, until that point, you will be a sole proprietor, whether you like it or not. That's just you know doing business as yourself. The thing is, and the the downside is, if you don't transition from a sole proprietor to an LLC, you're going to get taxed on 100% of your income, regardless of what expenses you have, right? So I, when I was growing up doing weddings and, you know, creating my, you know, my production business doing, I, I was making a lot of good money, but I was a sole proprietor. And even though I bought cameras and lenses and gear, that, that doesn't, that doesn't bring down the top line revenue, which is what you get taxed on. Having an LLC is really smart because your expenses brings down the top line revenue. Uh, if you pay yourself as an employee, that brings down the top line revenue. And so I know this is in a tax stream and there's a lot of great content. And I would encourage you to subscribe to the Think Media podcast because our, our CPA, Matt Bondrager, is going to be on our podcast in the coming weeks. And so that's Think Media podcast. And you can learn a lot about the tax game when it comes to YouTube. Yeah, that's awesome. And just to also go off that um, before we get into a, a more specific YouTube question for you is, um, you know, he, Toby also asked, you know, can you drop any referrals for outsourcing editing? Um, I'd love to hear what you think. But even for me, you know, I think media, I've been looking for editors. Um, and so I've kind of gotten a bit uh, just like deep diving into the space as well. I will say, if uh, you're just getting started, I think VidChops really is a great way to just get started. And I believe we even have a uh, some sort of deal with them where you can get like 10% off if you go to, is it thinkmediatools.com? I, I think so. is the correct link. If you go to that, you can scroll down, see all the tools we use. VidChops is on there because you can sign up for the program where I, for, I feel like the video editing, it's, it's around like 40 to $60 per video, which is really, really reasonable and and it's in bulk so you're paying for like four videos a month or maybe unlimited where you're doing like daily uh but it's a really good option that is budget friendly and there's not a lot of back and forth communication it's all right there i really like think that media the, tools. yeah i think go to thinkmediatools.com if you want to grab a discount even if you're thinking about doing that and you want to check out our other tools as well but yeah, as far as editing, I'd also say just look on, um, there's like Discord servers, there's Facebook groups, uh, on Twitter, you can search on Twitter, and, uh, and then also Fiverr, Upwork, like, I wish there was one answer, but really it's, I've had to check all the places and message they all people. They all have their pros and cons. Like, exactly. You know? I, I don't I, know if I you think, want to add anything to that, but yeah, I, I, what's cool about VidChops is as far as I know, you get assigned an editor. So you, do, you build that relationship with a specific person, which I think is nice. If you do something like Fiverr, you know, maybe, maybe the good thing is that they have a quick turnaround, but the con to Fiverr is it, they don't, you know, they can take as long as they want. Kind of it's 
you might not be able to use them again because they're too busy. So, you know, what's cool about VidChild, I would say, is just like you get assigned a person, you're paying for a spe specific output, and then it's on you. It's like a membership. So it's like on you to get them the footage uh, of your videos to get edited. But yeah, they all have their kind of, uh, you know, you know, cons. I would say maybe the, the con of vid chops would be it's simple editing, but I don't think you need to have complex editing. So uh, like, but they're not going to give you those Mr. Beats, Mr. Beast uh, captions and all that stuff. So that's yeah. And, I, and it's just expectations too. Every channel is different. Um, Mr. Beast, I don't want even want to know how much he costs, uh, you know, how much he's paying his editors to edit his video. So, uh, you know, if you do want some really good editing, of course, that's going to cost you um, if it's out of the U.S., I, I can imagine it's costing 80, 100 plus dollars. Uh, and if it's in the U.S., it, it could cost you a couple hundred dollars up to a thousand dollars. So it really just depends, you know, and then Mr. Beast, who knows what what he's charging for that complex, you know, uh, type of an edit. But definitely for a lot of us can get by just with a simple edit. And so that's why I, I love bid chops for a lot of the channels out there. So we have, a, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, I love this question from um, from John Adams. Can we answer it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's about live streaming. So his, what are your thoughts on using live streaming for short form 10, 8 to 10 minute videos? I'm thinking Ruslan style. I love Ruslan. Uh, I've noticed critical mass subs super needed to overcome lower quality, uh, lower quality retention. So the question is, what do I think about short live streams? Right off the bat, it's amazing. Like the for someone who's creating short form live streams is someone who's just trying to eliminate the editing process, which I'm all about. And if you can get really good at storytelling and get really good at, at, at creating your hook. And it, you said, dude, Ruslan, study the crap out of Ruslan because he does it at such a world-class level. His hooks are super dialed. Like he's developing his hooks by a script and then he's actually editing that out. He's, he's putting B-roll, he's adding captions. And then, it, and then it, he starts his live stream by playing a pre-recorded intro so that your expectations, you know what to expect as a viewer. And then he just gets right to the point, right? Under usually 10, 15 or less minutes. And so I think it's really cool. Another cool thing that you can do is, is plan a very long live stream initially, right? You go into the live stream. I'm going to talk about these five topics and they're all going to be about a, a 10 to 15 minutes each. And at the end of this, you have an hour and a half of a live stream. And then what you do is you could take down that live stream go into the YouTube editor, and this is what Ruslan would do too, and he would create the five videos out of that one live stream. And so this takes a lot of skill. I think this is something you can grow in if you have, you know, investing into the setup to be able to switch slides quickly and, and really streamline the process so that somebody doesn't, the issue with like a live stream typically is that it's, you know, there's a lot of dead time and, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out where something is. And, and, and so it's really, I think the, the practice makes perfect kind of thought, but dude, if you want legit, if I were to start from zero today, I would start with the Ruslan strategy. He's reacting to things going on in his industry and his niche. And so he never actually has to come up with content. He's just reacting to things going on in culture, in the church world. And I think it's just a great strategy. He's built over 200,000 subscribers, not having to think about a concept from zero. He's just reacting to things. And so um, I would say that's a, it's a good strategy. Yeah, that, that's a, I love that answer. And he also even followed up, John did and said, you know, not having the editing ability with live streaming, you know, it's easy, right? But it does make my audience retention so much lower. And so, um, you know, just a few more tactical tips, Omar. I think you mentioned the intro. Can you, can you just give some really practical advice for if you are doing a live streaming? I mean, we've seen Sean does a lot of live streams now that perform so well because if you can get people to actually stick for 10, 20, 30 minutes on a video, um, man, you can get hundreds of thousands, millions of views, but it's not like it's just luck. Sean is doing a few things there. And yep. I, and even in your live streams, can you talk about what, what are we doing at Think Media to get people to watch our live streams um, longer and keep that retention up? Yeah. So I would say number one, it starts with the topic of your live stream. Like, are people even gen interested in your topic? And and it doesn't have to be current events, but it like just generally speaking, is it is it something desirable? So it starts with the topic, which which influences how you title and thumbnail a vid video. So we're talking about the topic of a video influencing the title and the and the thumbnail of a video. And then once you get that click, 
this is where where it's very important. The way you start your live stream, it has to be, I'm sorry, it just has to be 10 times better because there's no editing. And so what are some things you can do to have a better intro? Number one, you can ask a question. Number two, you can state a statistic. Number three, you can jump right into the content. So when I started this live stream, I said, so what are some mistakes that new YouTubers are making? And then I just jumped mistake. Number one is they only start with one video. Don't you start, you know, so it almost giving a person, and this is maybe this is like the one liner that you need to write down. What would convince somebody to stay? Can you give somebody enough of something that they just can't leave is essentially what it is. So that, that just comes with delivering what it is they even clicked for to begin clicked on just to begin with. So you know, this, this live stream that we're on, it was big mistakes new YouTubers make. If I started this video and it was just completely random or I just talked about myself right away, like then, then I would have lost you. But I think because I jumped right into the first tip, talked about it, and then I did some like admin stuff. Then I was like, yo, comment where you're watching from, you know, this, that, and the other, you know. So I would say all that, your, your, your topic, your title and thumbnail, and then your hook. If you can dial those in, then, then keeping somebody for a longer period of time, like the eight to 10 minutes won't be as hard. And, and so I would encourage you with that. And then maybe some bonus things is just using something like StreamYard to be able to add things like this makes it, it makes it so easy. And it, and it, what it's adding is it's adding a, you know, um, something moving on screen, which in some sense will reset attention, which is super, uh, which is something you want to do when you are live streaming, what can you do to reset attention? Could it be throwing Nolan back up this reset it attention? And then if I go like this, you just, you know, you leaned in a little bit more, but then, you know, we share a slide and then you're kind of like, oh, okay, what's going on here? You know? And so we also see yeah. Sean, you know, we see Sean a lot in his live streams having slides. And I think that is something that you can do 100%. and in screen are very easily, you know, show different slides. So as Sean, you know, he, he's got arrows and so there's moving elements and it's almost like it's like live editing because he's going through here and he is showing exactly what he's talking about. He's got his bullet points and he's going through the video and it's still very engaging and it's almost like th this full on presenta presentation. But the, the cool thing is he's live. He he's on there for an hour. He has an hour long video no editing. And I think, um, you can definitely do that really easily in StreamYard, and that's going to help you just that'll help a lot as well. I love that. Um, I, I got one more question for you, Omar here, which is, I, I want some advice. Okay. Cause I bet you a lot of people are, are feeling very similar to Charlotte, which is they, they started a channel. They don't have any content yet. Maybe they're scared to start, but the truth is they just haven't made a decision on what to do. And I think so many people have a hard time um, deciding where to niche down and, and just how to get started. So can you give some, some tips out there to people who just don't know how to start? If you're here and you just absolutely don't know how to start on YouTube, I, I don't, I mean, I hope this is helpful, but I would say whatever you think it means or looks like to just get started, just do that. Because for some people, it might be, I need to make a cha channel ba banner and, you know, get my profile image up and then hook up my about me. Dude, there's your start. For other people, it's like, I need to get a video up on my channel. That's awesome. So whatever you need to do to get a video up on your channel, you need to do so. Even if you just take your phone and you do your channel about me and you're just talking about what your channel is about, even if you don't know what your channel is about or just talk about yourself. Because here's why I think it's so powerful to just upload a video on YouTube without any editing. It's to get through all the implied tasks. Did you know that when you upload a video, you get hit with like 10 different pages? It's like, yo, what's the title in the description of this video? Do you have a thumbnail? Upload a thumbnail. Hit next. Is this sponsored or is it copywritten? You know, like, is this for kids or is it for not? You know, uh, do you want, you know, ads? If, you, if you're, you know, if you got ads, you got to click. It, it's like there are so... There are so many implied tasks when it comes to uploading a video to YouTube. And so just getting a video up there, clicking around on all those things, it's going to help you get into the flow. And uh, once you get good at those implied tasks, I actually think is like, that's such a great w form of progress when it comes to starting a YouTube channel. So wh whatever you think it looks like to start, I, I, I would say do that. And then let's just, and then go from there. 
Dude, that is uh, amazing. I love that advice. It's so scary to get started, but um, sometimes you just got to start messy and be okay with it not being perfect. And so I and love then that. And be able to show everybody that it's that you sucked at one point like we do. Like, you know how many times we've like leveraged Sean's first video on the channel? Yeah. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It's so encouraging and it works every time. So you're creating something that you can reference in the past. But I just want to thank StreamYard for allowing us to do this yeah. Think Media Takeover. Hope you got value yeah. in this stream. I also want to say uh, next week on Wednesday, we are going live. We're going to be talking about the perfect video recipe that you can use for getting massive views on YouTube. It is the exact formula that we use uh, at Think Media in every single video. And it's, uh, we stick to it because it's what works for ranking videos in search. And it also helps us just find videos that um, just connect with our audience. Now, if you're watching the replay right now, then make sure you click on the screen right now and go watch the replay for that video because I think you're going to learn a lot there. We're going to be doing Q&As over there, underrated, overrated over there. Can't wait to see you guys next Wednesday. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for joining us.